My name is Mark Ehring. I'm the president of the Orangevale History Project. I'll be presenting today on the Quad Bridge Colony. And this presentation will be followed by the business meeting. We've got some exciting things coming up this year. I'd really encourage folks that if you haven't become a member yet, come hang out, listen to what's going on. I think you'll be excited to uh, participate in that in this coming year. Uh, the reason called the presentation the Quad Bridge Colony is because of some uh, newspaper articles early on in the, in the uh, development of the uh, corporation that created these acreages, these 10 acre parcels, and created this nice map behind me, and those kind of things. The, there was an article, and we'll see it here shortly, that said that they built three bridges to get to Folsom from the colony here and that was to get to the suspension bridge that already existed across the American River. So we had four bridges that are mentioned that needed to be crossed to get to Folsom in the early years. So we'll talk about those and get some more information about those. Pretty, pretty fun uh, research project. While we're here, this is, uh, if you didn't notice already on this map behind me, you probably can't see it because of the monitors, but the bottom right corner, this is the image that's on the giant map from the colony. This is the suspension bridge that at the time of the colony's founding was in place across the American River. And, uh, and that was in 1888, which we'll see. But uh, what's neat about this picture is it's a drawing, but there's really good detail. This right here, see this looks like a little ruin? That's a piece of the California Central Railroad Bridge um, structure that was there still when they drew this picture and they decided to leave it in the image. That was pretty neat detail that we get even from the artist rendering. Uh, so pretty neat. Agenda, so four bridges. I've called them the, the Major Bridge. That's our American River Bridge. We have the Ashland Bridge, because it was close to Ashland. Old Faithful, because it's still with us. And the bridge lost to time, which we will be hunting for that location of that fourth bridge. So the bridge count, as I mentioned, um, this article from the Sacramento Bee in 1890, two years after the colony was up and running, they had put in a lot of their water piping, they'd put in infrastructure, and uh, part of the article mentions uh, a mile and a, and a quarter road with three bridges that had been built uh, to the suspension bridge opposite Folsom. And this was all things that were accomplished by the colony, the corporation that developed the colony. So they're bragging about the three bridges that they built to get over to Folsom and allow the uh, colonists to get their fruit to market because that was the closest railroad depot. And at the time, railroad was king. So let's start with the, the major bridge uh, over the American River. This is an image from 1866 What's fantastic is the Library of Congress had some uh, nice negatives or glass, glass negatives of uh, somebody who had taken pictures of the bridge back in 1866 and we uh, were able to get, a, get those from the uh, archives. And here's a timeline of the major bridge and I am heavily relying on Carol Ann West. Uh, people that have been around Orangeville for a while will have heard of Carol Ann West. She was a pretty uh, strong historian, uh, really a proponent for Orangevale, and uh, actually did a big uh, push to have the Steel, Press, the Steel Trust Bridge across uh, American River renamed as the T.B. Hall Bridge because he was uh, one of the colonizing uh, board members and he was a strong proponent for replacing the bridge, as we'll see, so it's interesting. So I'm using her timeline and that's up at the top here, and I'll call them out just in case you're in the back and you can't see the numbers. So the first number that Caroline brings up is 1851. Well, two years after the gold rush started, they needed a way across the river to get supplies to the various mining camps. And so the first uh, bridge mentioned is a wagon bridge. The uh, second one, and these come in pretty rapid succession. Part of that is because of all the flooding that was happening back in the day, and it would wash out all the bridges on the American River. Just every few years, you know, they would, wouldn't build them high enough, and they would just get washed out. So we have the second bridge that's uh, three years later, 
and that's actually the first toll bridge. So they started charging a toll. It was a private bridge. And so you would pay to get your wagon across. Uh, now we pay the, the government. Uh, but back then you'd pay a private citizen to go across the bridge. Then in 1858, four years later, we end up with another toll bridge. In 1862, we finally get to a bridge that's gonna stick around for a little while. And that's our suspension bridge, which uh, we had a picture of. You'll see a couple of these um, as we go a little bit further here. So the, the, the uh, suspension bridge lasted uh, 30, almost 30 years. So it was a pretty decent bridge for the time. And uh, it was high enough that uh, the, the water wasn't tearing it out like all the other bridges. <clears throat> then of course, we have the Orangeville Colony established in 1888. They have then built those three bridges to get connected with this main bridge across the American River. Uh, and then in 1892, it was actually a year before that, so T.B. Hall started uh, proposing putting a new bridge in place because the suspension bridge was starting to get a little sketchy. And in sketchy, in 90, I think in 91, one of the cables snapped, so it was hanging like this. So you could still cross if you were on foot <laughs> and hanging on, uh, but your wagons, all the fruit that was coming out of Orangeville at the time, it was starting to go uh, pretty, pretty heavy at that point. We had quite a few colonists with uh, a lot of fruit going. The bridge went down and they couldn't use it. So they were having to ship their, um, their fruit via wagon over the, the trails up to Roseville at the time because in 1892 Fair Oaks didn't exist yet and we had no Fair Oaks bridge so the closest railroad depot would have been Roseville at the time so for a short period of time while they figured this out and got the steel trust bridge up they had to uh, again wagon up the uh, the fruit up to Roseville to get it out to market uh, in 92 you can see the steel trust bridge here that uh, we have again with us today as of uh, the re-moving uh, of it back in 99-2000. Uh, this one was, again, a connection from T.B. Hall. He had uh, a relationship with the San Francisco Bridge Company. They used this P Pennsylvania style steel truss bridge. And it was impressive because it's still with us today after some improvements, you know, some replacements of some components, but it's still going strong um, where it uh, was originally built back in 1892. And then finally, the Rainbow Bridge in 1917. So that's as far as we're going. We're not going to the, the new fancy bridge, but the Rainbow Bridge in 1917 replaced the Steel Trust Bridge. The Steel Trust got moved up to Siskiyou County, was up there for many years, 70 years, I think. And then it uh, was being replaced, so they brought it back. Folsom brought it back and uh, re, uh, refurbished it, and now it's got the pedestrian access, which is a really neat way to use that historical um, bridge, very, uh, very nice bridge. So this was the, the major bridge uh, timeline, and here's a great picture. I figured I'd put a big picture of one of those Library of Congress images. So here's our suspension bridge across the American River. These are the same supports that the Steel Trust uses even today. So these were built back in, um, what I say, 1862. So they, they've been around quite a while, very impressive. Behind it, you can see our California Central Railroad Bridge, which was also very impressive and probably one of the reasons why they spent time making some nice glass negatives of this, uh, of this spot. But these were some of the most impressive bridges of the time in the West, uh, going across a large river. So really neat to see the uh, the picture, and of course you can see Folsom in the background there through the haze, most likely uh, smoke from various camps, maybe the, the uh, coal from the railroad. But uh, neat, neat picture that we have available to us from the Library of Congress. So thanks to them for saving also our heritage. So now we'll move to the next bridge. I'm, I'm calling this the Ashland Bridge because it is very close to the old Ashland or uh, Big Gulch was one of the other names uh, over the years. And uh, this is the intro slide, so you see a few pictures around the, um, this bridge. And it is the shortest lived bridge. So they built it 
back when the colony, they did the first generation bridge. It was retrofitted in 1899 by the Board of Supervisors. They paid for it to be uh, redone. And then by 1914, uh, it was filled in. And uh, we'll see that. Is Larry here? Hi, Larry. Larry Fritz, Citrus Heights Historical Society. Um, we owe a great gratitude of debt to him for this postcard. <laughs> the, the postcard came from, uh, was it eBay or Etsy? eBay. eBay, okay. Yeah, and, and just a little plug there. We have in our budget for this year some uh, funding to do procurement of artifacts. So we did put that in there because just like Larry found, uh, he found a postcard that it says it's from Orangeville. Yeah. Orangeville. And uh, he might have passed it up, but then he also noticed it said Folsom Cal. He's like, huh, well, that's very interesting. I wonder if that's of any use for us folks here locally. And so he uh, bought it, he scanned it, he sent K and I a picture of it and said, hey, does this look interesting? Does this uh, look familiar? I was like, hmm, that's, that's interesting. So first thing jumps out if you're, if you're paying close attention, that's a steel truss bridge, Pennsylvania style. Just happens to be across the American River. Um, so that would put the American River right through here. The uh, Orangeville is a mistake. That would be Orange Vale. Uh, so that was a correction there. And then this bridge right here. This is the only picture we have of this bridge. Uh, so we were very excited when Larry shared this with us because uh, I knew there were multiple bridges in between Orange Vale and Folsom, but I didn't know where uh, two of the bridges were. And this picture gave us the evidence for at least one of those two bridges, which was very exciting. And you can see we're, we're elevated in this picture. So we're up on the bluff looking toward uh, Orange Vale behind us. And we're looking off that high point and we're looking over this bridge. We're looking to this Ashland area. Ashland Station would have been over here somewhere. And then we have, of course, the bridge across the American River. Uh, this postcard was postmarked 1914. And that's the same year they tore the bridge out. So very good timing. In fact, these X's, there's some writing around the edge of the postcard. This person was writing a note to their uh, family, I think perhaps in Oakland or something. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it mentioned something about, oh, where the X's are, there's things being torn out. They're doing road, they're changing the roads up. And so I guess the word was already out. So he had a picture of what it looked like before they made the changes. And so all these uh, fences were gonna be torn out. This house was gonna be torn down and over here is gonna be torn down. So there was quite a bit of work that was gonna happen as part of that uh, renovation of the roadway. So yes, so the setting off the big blast. So in May of 1914, this article talks about how the contractor who won the bid to fill in that ravine and get rid of the bridge, they tunneled into the hillside right below where this picture was taken and they blew out a bunch of fill to use in there to make the culvert and then fill in that ravine there. So really neat uh, postcard that helped us fill in the gaps on these particular bridges. There's another picture, just got a hold of this in um, the last week of December. I went to the Center for Sacramento History. If you look at the Orangevale book, Paul Sundell's Orangevale book, there's a few pictures in there of a, um, a car, uh, an old motor car, this one right here. And the pictures just say uh, Lincoln Highway Oldsmobile. And that's all the information that was on in, in Paul's book other than it it was pictures of Orangevale, and one of them was from the Lincoln Cut, so we know that's right in our area. And then this one here, if you can imagine it, you have Folsom Auburn and Greenback Lanes intersection right behind you. And you're looking at the hill heading back towards Orangevale, if you can see that. And nowadays you have a road going up here to the apartment complexes at the top of the hill, but this road is still here from 1914. So this picture, you can see the blast area, from the, from the tunneling and getting the fill dirt to fill in this culvert. So this picture is just a couple years after they did that work. So very interesting. The other interesting thing about these pictures is they were in a collection from um, the Mrs. McClatchy. I can't remember if it's Eileen or 
um, what was it? Eleanor. Eleanor, thank you. Thank you, Kay. Eleanor McClatchy had a collection. It's at the Sacramento History Center. And um, there were a set of pictures in there that hadn't been digitized yet. I found them at the end of December. And some of those pictures are the ones that Paul had in the book. So he took a few pictures from that series that was in her collection and put it in the Orangevale book, but didn't have any details around them. So when I started looking through the pictures, I'm like, wait a second, I've seen this before. You remember our, um, there's a doctor in the house uh, presentation. We had uh, Amanda Prius go coast to coast in her, uh, her car. I didn't have the type of car at the time and uh, come to find out it was an Oldsmobile. And one of the pictures has a very nice shot of the car. This is her on the Yellow Causeway back in 1916. And uh, eerie similarities, I would say, between the left and the right photo. Uh, even has the same hat on. I think got her same hat. She has her driving clothes in this car, in this uh, picture. This was Sacramento Bee, which would have matched up with the McClatchy collection. Um, she was definitely, um, Eleanor was uh, definitely big on uh, women's, I think, suffrage and uh, the, just what women can do at the time. Back then, it was before women could vote. And the really cool thing with um, Amanda is she was the very first woman to go coast to coast solo, and she made a record of it. She made it in just over 11 days from coast to coast. This is in 1916, so three years after the Lincoln Highway is announced, if I remember right, 1913. And <laughs> based on these pictures, she didn't actually take the two official routes around Sacramento up to Lake Tahoe. She went through Orangeville, which wasn't at the time an official route for the Lincoln Highway. So I was talking with Larry about that a few, a few days ago, and that was, uh, it was a pretty neat um, discovery to see. We actually had pictures of her driving through. And the last photo of this montage from the collection is her driving over the Steel Trust Bridge, headed off to go uh, over the rest of the country. So they took a photo from the Yellow Causeway, took a few shots of her going through Orangevale, and then the last one going over the Steel Trust Bridge. So really neat. Uh, again, she lived in the uh, Simmons house across the street here in uh, 1913 to 1916. And uh, so we have a little bit of Orangeville that uh, was in the record books at the time. And she spent the time to go through Orangevale. So that tells me she had friends here. Her sister got married here and she lived in Fair Oaks. So most likely she swung by the house to say bye bye as she was heading on over to the other side of the country. So really neat, uh, neat story there that we got some more information on with, uh, with this research. All right, Old Faithful. So this is the bridge that's still with us. Uh, this is the first generation bridge. This is the one photo we have of the first generation bridges. There were uh, three generations. Uh, the one we have with us today, of course, is uh, the uh, Gold River Bridge, now part of the Lincoln Highway System, a historical bridge. But the first generation was built by the Orangevale Colony, Colonization Company. The second one by the Sacramento Board of Supervisors that was subbed out in uh, 1899. So only, only about 10 years after, we'll talk about that. And then third generation being our uh, current one built in 1915. First generation, 1888, they needed those bridges to get over to Folsom, of course, like we mentioned, to get the fruit into, uh, into place. And I mean, if you look at the picture, they, they were less than robust, I, I like to say. <laughs> there, we have some uh, support beams there, there and there. So we've got three kind of sticks. It almost looks like a Lego erector set. I'm just, uh, I really, and then this little bit of support on the top. I, I wouldn't be very excited about crossing that bridge. <laughs> and at the time, and this is uh, 10 years after they built it. So this, this we're talking 10 years. And this bridge is already, they're talking about condemning it. Um, that's how kind of shoddy, I would say, the work was. So not a shining moment for the Orangevale Colonization Company, but uh, the Board of Supervisors was trying to figure out what to do about that. And uh, so it was in a dangerous condition. 
they were uh, trying to decide, yeah, what to do with this, because the colony had, of course, dissolved at this point. They had moved on. This is a county problem, so you guys figure it out. We're going to uh, let you uh, resolve the issue. But obviously, we need this road. I mean, the, the farmers, the orchardists, are having a place to get their, uh, their crops, and we need to make sure we get that there quickly. So comes the second generation bridge, 1899, based on the articles there was quite a bit of conversation with the Board of Supervisors. They talked about uh, repair, they talked about removing the bridges, they talked about just putting up a sign and saying, use at your own risk, and not doing anything. Um, they talked about just blocking the roadway. So there were a lot of discussions. I saw quite a few in the different Board Supervisor minutes. They were going back and forth, and they finally decided to fund it and contract it out, but not before they frustrated a few people. Uh, one of the uh, opinion pieces in the Folsom Telegraph. As the repairing of the bridges on the Orangeville Road presents obstacles and problems too great for the Board of Supervisors to surmount, we suggest that the Solons construct an airship for the convenience of the Orange pe Orangeville people when they wish to come to Folsom. <laughs> <laughs> so they're talking about dirigibles and uh, blimps and whatnot to try to get uh, your fruit off to market. So. I think they were being a little facetious, but uh, apparently there were some people that were getting a little frustrated with the supervisors before they finally uh, bit the bullet and, and, and did it. But this is, uh, this is the Orangevale Bridge, uh, the second generation, uh, much more robust and sturdy. And then finally we get the third generation. By the time 1915 comes around, we're two years into the Lincoln Highway. Uh, at the time, it didn't come through Orangevale. Uh, the Board of Supervisors was big with the automobiles that were now out and running about. They were doing a lot of work on the roadways and improving the bridges. Uh, so at the time of 1915, they were a pretty, pretty good uh, crew. They were spending quite a bit of money investing properly. The uh, surveyor at the time, Butler, was uh, part of, I think he still has over... 38 bridges standing in the county, if I remember right from my last reading. So they were really good bridges that he, he put up. And uh, this is one of those uh, before the Rainbow Bridge. This is same style that was built uh, as Rainbow, but this was the first one, the Gold River Bridge, or we like to call it the Orangevale Bridge, over uh, Gold Creek. And this is a, uh, a view from uh, Google Street View. And uh, they started it in April 1915, so they had all the supplies put in place and uh, prepared to uh, build the bridge. At the time, and someday I'll get to this, <laughs> they're doing a bridge across the Fern Glen Ravine. You don't hear that anymore. You hear it a lot early on in Orangevale's um, history. So someday we'll get to the Fern Glen, but today we won't. But just an interesting little tidbit, Fern Glen, and uh, they've closed the road, but by July 1915, we have the road up and running. They are uh, showcasing it as a fantastic new modern bridge uh, with the roadway to go with it. So they did a, a great job on that, and it's lasted for a long time. The uh, Lincoln Highway Society s saved it from Folsom uh, a few years back, got it renovated. So we appreciate them doing that instead of having it replaced with a new bridge. And uh, one of the, the surveyor, he's a legend in the civil engineering area, circles. Uh, there's actually an award named after him. So if you're a civil engineer in the Sacramento section, there is an award you can win that's called the Drury Butler Award. And uh, he's the one that was, again, in charge of building this bridge. So that's pretty neat um, legacy for uh, his work in Sacramento County. All right, the bridge lost to time. <clears throat> so this bridge um, doesn't exist right now. So trying to figure out where it was was a bit of a puzzle that um, I was putting together. And so I'll bring you through some of the, the different pieces that you know pulling from to try to make uh, a complete picture as possible from the uh, data we have available to us. So you'll see a bunch of maps. So I, I like maps. Hopefully you like maps. You'll see quite a few maps here as I try to figure out, okay, based on the maps, what can we know or not know, or maybe it's not clear. And you'll, you'll get to go through that process with me right now. 
All right, so the first map, this is Sacramento County's parcel map from 1900. These are available on the Internet Archives in case you're uh, bored and you want to look through some old parcel maps. They're, uh, they're out there. And this one's not very descriptive. You just have a little wiggle. <laughs> and it connects up here to, this would be uh, Greenback Lane, or back then it would have been Orangeville Avenue before Orangeville Avenue existed. Uh, you don't see a road here through the, between those parcels. So that doesn't exist on this map. Let's jump to uh, the 1892 map from the colony, which was much more detailed than the parcel maps of even 1900. And on this map, we don't have any bridges showing from the Orangevale perspective. We have the main bridge across the river. That would have been our suspension bridge. Uh, but we do see these ravines. So there's one ravine here. We have a ravine here. It's two, ravine here, and a ravine here. So it's crossing four ravines. All I know about is three bridges at this point. It's like, hmm, Caroline West actually thought there were four bridges, but she didn't have any um, evidence for the four bridges. But this is one of the pictures that would have brought you to that conclusion because there are four ravines you have to cross to get through this picture. So that would make a lot of sense. This is a, a really neat map. <clears throat> I was excited about this one. If you go to the U.S. Geological Surveys site and you look at the um, historical maps, they have quite a collection. You can go to a particular spot in their uh, web browser. You click on the area, in this case, Orangevale, and it'll give you a list on the side of all the old historical maps they have for that area that align with the spot you picked. And so we went, you know, I've gone through all of them. I've had a number of people go through them. This one was really neat. Um, even though it's incomplete, you'll see there's a lot of white in here. This was a valley floor map. They uh, mapped the entire Sacramento Valley floor. So this is just a very small subset of it. But they only went up to 200, 225 feet. At that point, it went white. So if you look at the map, you'll see all the foothills just disappear. It's just the valley floor. But the cool thing about it is it's one of the only maps that had bridges on it. And what we have here, and this is again 1914. The, uh, they actually don't show the bridge across the American River. That's kind of funny. They have a little bridge here. But uh, here's a bridge. This is our Ashland Bridge showing up on the map across this ravine. We don't see any bridges along this long stretch. Right here would be the Lincoln Cut right in here because that was a larger, a taller area. So the bridge, the, the road kind of disappears because we kind of go up, we go through the Lincoln Cut, and then we kind of go up over a little hill, and then we come down to the first bridge over this ravine, and then we have a second bridge right behind it. And so we have this pair of bridges over here. It's like, huh, well, we don't have any pairs of bridges at this point in time, so which bridge is which? Which one's the Orangevale Bridge, and which one's the bridge that's missing? Yeah, very interesting. This is, again, this is a close-up of this map behind me. And this one shows some bridges, which was nice. Now, we have those three ravines that were close to Orangevale. And there's that fourth one that Ashland, next to Ashland. This one, they don't show a bridge on. These two, they show bridges on. So that was an interesting uh, clue to, uh, to our bridges. The other thing to think about is, like, why would you run the bridge south? Why would you take this hard corner and come down here instead of just connecting here like we do these days. Well, at the time they developed the colony, the town site was a big part of it. They were going to have businesses, they were going to have the hotel, this was going to be the showcase along the bluff. So all these streets, all this, this was going to be a, a significant town at the time. And they were going to have a, a railroad come in and connect with it. So there were a lot of big plans for this area on the bluff and they didn't want that to be my, my theory, anyway, is they didn't want that to be skipped and people just drive by it. So it, it's almost like they forced the road down into the bluff area so that they could then sell their uh, town site lots, which didn't work out. It didn't, uh, didn't come together, and we know the villa moved, and we know that story from the previous presentations. 1891 USGS map. These were not very detailed. <laughs> I'll just say that. They didn't do a good job back then. Um, we have the, the road coming through here, and we have this really hard churn again coming back. And, and they show it 
much more dramatic, right? So we have greenback lane coming way over here and you got this really hard churn and we're, we're kind of cutting back. This is interesting. 1911, this is where we finally get a connection between Orangevale Avenue and this road. This isn't quite the scale, I don't think, because the road shows it going straight through all the way across Orangevale Bridge area and into the hills. So I don't think it's quite accurate from a, uh, from a detail perspective, but it does show that it connects that hard curve churn with the colony over here. And the reason for that is these are new parcels. This is the Santa Juanita colony that came in after the fact. The Orangevale colony ended right here on the Santa Juanita road there. And these extra parcels were added at a later date as a different colony. So at that point, they would have had a reason to then push this road through to get to those parcels that they were selling um, just above the road there on Orangevale Avenue. And then uh, 1925, we still have this connection here. We still have the road coming down here to Greenback and uh, we still have here. So we have the two ravines right here. We have this third ravine, which we saw on the other map, didn't have a bridge across it. And so right now we've got a bridge here and a bridge here. So we've got to figure out which one, which one's which, which one's missing, which one's still here. On the final map, this is um, 44, 1944 USGS. At this point, this road has become a dotted line. So it's fading. You have the main route for the Lincoln Highway and, and all that stuff coming through Main Avenue, Orangevale Avenue. And uh, again, this, this road is now fading into history at this point in 1944. So somewhere between 1925 and 1944, there appears to have been a significant change in the traffic uh, route. All right, this is, this is cool stuff. So <clears throat> USGS has uh, radar, ground radar data available to anyone. Just go to the national map, you can look at ground radar. This is called, uh, they call it 3 um shaded, multi-directional shaded hillside. And what that does is you can see all the different elevation levels in the, uh, in the ground through the trees, through the buildings, it's, it's just the ground. So it's a very, very neat um, setup. This close up is, here's the Orangevale Bridge. This road right here is your Orangevale Avenue. Running across along the ravine here. Here's Gold Creek coming through. That's the one ravine. And here's a second ravine going parallel to Orangevale Avenue. This right here is that development um, behind Scott Seafood. There's a, there's a little bluff there in between those ravines. It's just a nice little flat plateau. And they developed up to this line right here. And so if you looked at the actual map, you'll see the backyards end up right at this line. So looking closely, one of the things I noticed was when we got to here, there's a fan out from the road. So that there's, a, there's like a, a large flat area off to the side of the road. If you drive by, you'll see it. And uh, when I looked a little closer, on the other side of the ravine, there is a little raised area that has a bit of an angle. It's pointing towards that other side, towards the, uh, the raised area on the other side. The other thing you can notice if you look closely, it's hard to see, of course, in this presentation, but there are little uh, terraced spots below those, uh, the high points. There's little terrace spots, which would have been for the support beams for the, the road itself. So based on that, I would say that is where the Lost Bridge of Orangevale is. Yes, and we're not done yet. This is the parcel maps. Uh, I had Terry check to see what was going on here. This is privately owned now, but if you look at the parcel maps, it's a very interestingly shaped parcel, don't you think? It's exactly where the bridge would have been at the time. So most likely that was the easement for the bridge. When they tore it down, they sold the property. And uh, we didn't go all the way back to see when Sac County owned it, but at some point in the past, most likely, that was uh, Sacramento County property for the bridge. 
That's going back to our original picture. When I first saw this picture, we got this from the Orangevale Water Company. Very thankful for their collection uh, that Kay and team have been able to dig through. Uh, this is a great picture. So there, here's our two bridges. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh, this is being taken from like the top of the Lincoln Cut and we're looking kind of uh, back towards Orangevale off to the left here. And so, you know, this is a, a different bridge and that's, I thought that was the Orangevale Bridge back there. Well, when I went ahead and walked around, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago, I took a look and I found the high point where the picture was taken. And if you can see that. So right here, this is the cut from the railroad that went through here. Back then it was very tall. Uh, you can see the shade right here. Um, it was quite a, quite a tunnel there. The Lincoln cuts further behind us at this point, but this was another cut the railroad had to do to get into the Orangevale area. And looking at this picture, you can just see a little bit of it left. Uh, that's it's deteriorated away, they've gotten rid of it, but uh, there's still a little bit of it left. And of course we have the standard cut still on the side of the hill over here. And if we didn't have the trees around here, you would be able to see our lost bridge back there behind the trees, if it still existed. Um, if you're looking for an old car, there's one down in the ravine, <laughs> upside down. It might be a Studebaker, I'm not sure. But uh, there's one down there you could collect uh, just to the uh, left of my car down in the ravine. It's very, very steep. Somebody decided to leave it there after they took it off the side of the uh, cliff there. But uh, this is that raised area I was talking about next to Orangeville Avenue. And if you look across, you can see that little raised area where the road used to be. So this would have been where our uh, bridge was going across the, uh, the creek there. So now we know about the four bridges that uh, you had to cross to get to Orangevale. And uh, I'm hoping that was very informative for you. <laughs> and here's the last picture here. This is the uh, Amanda driving across the Steel Trust Bridge on her way to New York at the time. And uh, so pretty neat uh, to do the research on this and then of course share it with our community.